Motion One is a lightweight animation library that lets us create complex animations easily inside of our view app. Built off the web animations API, Motion One lets us animate elements transform, opacity, and any other CSS style. My favorite thing is that it has great built-in view support, so it's perfect for us view developers. We can go ahead and install it in our view apps by running npm install motion. So first, inside of our template, let's create a div to animate. We'll give it a class of box, and then some CSS styles that change its position, size, background, and border radius. And then finally, let's go to our script, and we want to import on mounted from view and animate from motion. So once our component mounts, we have access to our DOM. So inside here, we we can say const animation equals animate. And this takes three properties. First is either a list of elements or a query selector. And for ours, we want to target our box class. Second are the properties that we want to animate. And we'll create a nice pulse by saying scale 1.1. And then the third is the list of options. We can change the duration, set our easing type, where we can choose ease in, ease out, or my favorite, we can import spring from motion and then get a nice natural easing algorithm. We can say how many times we want it to repeat, and for ours we'll say infinity, and then our direction. And we want it to alternate, so every time it repeats, it'll grow and then shrink. So if we take a look at it, this is already pretty nice. But also in Motion's core library, we can chain animations together to form a sequence by importing timeline. So let's import that and then create another div with a class of box. Let's add a class called rotate to our first div and pulse to our second one. So the way timeline works is that it takes a list of animations similar to the animate function and then it runs them sequentially one after another. We can turn our previous animation into our grow animation and then we can create another animation by targeting box.rotate and here we'll set our rotation to 45 degrees. Then we'll call timeline, pass in an array with rotate and grow, set the repeat to infinity and the direction to alternate. So now our entire timeline will repeat infinitely where we'll go rotate, grow, grow, rotate, and so on and so on. So while the core library of motion is great, there's also a ton of built-in view functionality. So let's clear out our script in our template and check it out. So the first thing we want to do is import motion from motion slash view, and we'll also import ref from view. We'll create a constant rotation and set it equal to a ref with a default of 45. Inside of our template, let's create a button that when clicked sets our rotation to a random number up to 360. Then we can create our motion component, pass it our class of box, and then specify a few different properties. First, we can say colon animate, and here we can specify our animation the same way that we've done previously. We can set rotate to our rotation variable. Then we can also customize our transition by setting a duration and an easing algorithm. So when we look at this, whenever our rotation changes, motion will automatically reanimate our element to that new rotation. But one thing we'll notice is that when our page first loads, our element starts at a rotation of zero and then rotates to 45 degrees. If we don't want this to happen, we can specify an initial value by saying colon initial. And here we can either set rotate to 45 or in a case where we had multiple properties that we were animating, we can set it to false. And when we set initial to false, our initial value will be our animated state. So we've seen how motion animates our element on the first load. But what happens if we toggle its visibility or display using VIF or VSHOW? And to do this, we have to add one extra thing from motion called presence. And this works similarly to view's transition element. So let's import it and then change our rotation ref to a ref that says show with a default value of true. And then inside of our button, we'll make a toggle show. Here, we can add our VIF to our motion element. And for this example, let's say that we want our initial state to have an opacity and scale of zero, and the end state of our animation to have an opacity and scale of one. We can now wrap this with our new presence element. And to create our exit animation, all we have to do is specify one more prop on our motion element, and that's exit. And this sets the exit state of our animation, and we want to make it the same as our initial state with an opacity and scale of zero. So now if we load our app, we'll see that on the initial load, our element fades in and grows in, and then when we toggle it away, it will fade out and scale out. So obviously this is just a quick introduction to a library that I think is pretty cool, but if you're interested, I highly recommend taking a deep dive into the motion docs to find out what exactly is possible with this lightweight framework. If you're interested on watching more videos on complex animation in view with motion or some other library, let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.